Hello and welcome to another episode of Marty's Matchbox Makeovers. Today I shall be doing a makeover on this rather sorry looking number 60A Morris J2 pickup which came out in 1958. There were several variants of this model. Sometimes they came with a rear cabin window and sometimes without. They had grey and black plastic wheels and they had an advert sign on the side which the words supply company were sometimes in white and sometimes in black. This model was donated by Oliver Arulev from Creffield in Germany and Oliver is also a member of the Vespa Scooter Riders Club. This red Morris pickup van is uh, rather sad looking, it's got rusty axles and a wheel missing at the back there which is not too good. But today I'm also doing over this green and yellow version which does not have a rear cabin window and was donated by someone unknown as I guess it was donated before I used to keep records. I'm going to try and keep the bases on these models. Because there's no windscreen or interior details there is really no need to remove the base. So it would be nice to keep it original as possible. Using my cylindrical grindstone, as usual, I am wearing away the end of the axle to remove the axle and get these wheels off. The beauty of this model is that the body is keeping the tyre away from the rotating grindstone and therefore no damage can possibly take place. When I removed the axle, one of the wheels fell into the inside of the model, so I had to rattle it around a little bit and thankfully it came out of the windscreen. Here's a close up of that base and you can see that I'm going to have to strip this model down and repaint the base separate from the body. As for the red model, the axles have a lot of rust on them and they have swollen as a result. This always makes the wheels difficult to remove. So first up, I always try an old favourite WD-40 which supposedly loosens rusted parts. So I place it in this disposable food container and saturate the axles and wheels with the WD-40 spray in the hope that if I leave it for half an hour it will penetrate the hole in the wheel where the axle goes and loosen the axle up so I can remove the wheels easily. Some people suggest Coca-Cola, others Pepsi. I'm a Pepsi man myself but I've found neither work for removing rust. Whilst I'm leaving that to soak I'm using the other model as a guide for the colour blue that I'm going to repaint them. I'm using this Tamiya X14 blue and the X2 white. Recently I've gotten into the habit of keeping the old empty Tamiya jars and washing them out and using them to store paint. So that's what I'm going to use this jar for. But first up I need to mix the paint. Now if you're mixing paint it's always a good idea to add the darker colours to the lighter colours. So I'm starting off with the Gloss White X2. Now I'm going to add some of this sky blue colour to it and hopefully get lucky and match the original colour. Sometimes I nail it the first time. This time however when I put the paint on the model I realised it was way too light. So I'm going to have to darken it down a little bit. So it's basically trial and error is the technique I use. There's no science behind it. It's just go with your gut instinct. So I add another dollop of the sky blue and try again. I'm getting closer but it's still not dark enough. I decide to add some X4 which is a darker blue in the hope to speed things up. So I start off just with one drop as it's a very strong colour and then I add a couple more. Tell her the truth, I'm sick of stirring this paint by hand. So I use this Badger paint stirrer that was donated by a viewer called Claire Ravenwood. And it comes in handy from time to time. It does make the paint a little bit frothy however. So you have to let it sit before you run it through the air gun. 
Well, there we go. I think that paint is close enough. So I just add a, a little bit of thinner here before I put it in my jar. And not only that, I just added one, don't ask me why, I just dropped one extra dollop of the darker blue in there. I just felt it needed it. Anyway, thoroughly mixed with the thinners, it's now ready to store in the jar. Now this is a rather unique colour and it's only suited to this, this model as far as I'm aware. So I write on the jar the model number, which is a no number 60. A, I should have added, but it's a number 60A. Now it's time to wash the paint stirrer in just a shot glass of thinners. And it came up like new. I'm happy with that. Now this... So going back to this model now that's been soaking in the WD-40. And the axles have not actually become any freer. So I'm a little bit disappointed. I'm using these needle nose pliers here to grip the end of the axle and try and work it loose. But I realize I'm fighting a losing battle. So I end up deciding I'm going to cut the axles off, which I do now with those side cutters. And I attempt to force the ends of the axle out using the leverage of the chassis against the nose of the needle nose pliers. It does take a bit of effort, a bit of wiggling and tugging. But I get it out in the end. And I'm rather surprised here because there's only one wheel. I think the other one might have fallen on the floor. Not sure, but I think I've got some spares. So I'm not too concerned at this stage. I'm going to clean these wheels in this ultrasonic cleaner. I've got some warm water there and I'm using some of this circuit board cleaning liquid. And a subscriber told me to save on the cleaning liquid, which is quite expensive, put it in a glass jar in the sonic cleaner, immersed in ordinary water. And they said you get the same results. So I'm trying that now and indeed the wheels are moving around in there and there is some agitation. You can see the dirt coming off the wheels in this shot now. So after it's finished I'm trying to filter the cleaning solution so that maybe I can reuse it. So I run it through this kitchen towel into a plastic disposable cup. Now I'm having a look at them and they have indeed come very clean and I'm quite pleased. That's actually starting to show some improvement in my technique of using the ultrasonic cleaner. These grey plastic wheels look brand new. The black ones look new except for the oval holes in the middle of a couple of them where I had to force them off the axle. So I'll probably end up having to replace those anyway with some spares from my spares boxes. Now taking things a little bit further, I actually thought maybe I can improve on the cleaning efficiency of the ultrasonic cleaner. So I took a bit of a break from the makeover and grabbing a couple of picture hooks and some wire in a glass jar, I made this suspendable glass vessel that is not in contact with the base of the ultrasonic cleaner. And I felt that maybe that was what was uh, reducing the effects of the ultrasonic waves. So I'm still experimenting with this uh, device. And I chuck all the wheels in there. These are some other wheels that I've got from other models. And I thought I'd give them a, a bit of a jiggle in my new device. And looking here, you can see that it's working really well as the ripples in the water are identical to the ripples in the cleaning solution. So I think I may have nailed it now and uh, I've educated myself into how to use this machine efficiently. Now counting the wheels here doesn't make sense. There's too many wheels and not enough models. Anyway, moving on. I'm now going to paint strip the models and remember I'm leaving the bases on. I'm using this ketchup bottle so I can place a small amount of paint stripper as and where required 
and it does seem a little bit more economical as to the method I used to use where I just tipped the can upside down and dropped half of it into a bowl and ended up washing it away down the sink. So it's about now I realise I've uh, accidentally left a tyre on this and uh, I don't think it's going to survive the paint stripping too well. Now this red paint here on the red model is very very difficult to come off. Certainly put up a fight and this is not pretty. It gets pretty messy here and I can see people saying why don't you use caustic soda and I must admit I do wish I had uh, mastered that technique especially when I get a model like this that is uh, putting up a fight. However I had a couple of catastrophes with the caustic soda and I do actually think that it's a little bit dangerous to be playing with in the house and I do most of my uh, makeover in the house not in an outside shed so I guess if you've got an outside workshop it's not a bad option because you're not going to contaminate the kitchen or the bathroom or whatever with caustic soda residue. Anyway that's just my opinion so I persevere with the polish strip paint stripper and like I said this red paint is really really annoying me at the moment. I'm using all sorts of techniques that I've used in the past that have worked and they don't seem to be working today. This is one of those models where it's got those sharp right angles and corners where the paint seems to sit unaffected and hide, tries to hide away. So I have to resort to using these dental tools which are extremely useful for removing small amounts of paint like this that are left behind. And I would recommend if you haven't got any that you try and source some dental tools my first set came from eBay and they were quite cheap. They took a while to get here because they came from China. Uh, but look at that, big chunk there came off. And that's the sort of thing you can achieve with these, with the mechanical effect of grinding out the paint in those seams with a sharpened metal tool. So I can breathe a sigh of relief and now I'm on to the Dremel with the wire brush just to run it around on the inside of the rear bay of the truck there and around the axle housings the details on the front just trying to get as much paint off as I can whilst I'm doing that I find the missing tire these are all plastic by the way these grey plastic tires and the black ones too and it didn't react too well to the paint stripper as you can see it's gone snow white and all crumbly has no tread so I'm gonna to have to replace that one it fell out as I was like working on it here's a close-up of the two trucks showing the different variants one with a rear cabin window and one without so these are the types of brushes I've been using to clean off the paint and I guess you could call them a disposable item because after you've used them for a couple of models that this is what they look like and those little hairs or the brush fibers end up all over the place this is my work mat and I had a look around afterwards and this is where half of them ended up they're just scattered absolutely everywhere so you have to vacuum the floor before you walk in here with socks otherwise those fibers stick straight in your foot here's some little LED magnetic lamps I picked up from an auto store they're very handy for use in the spray booth as they provide a little spotlight effect and because they're magnetized I can connect them to that ruler that is screwed to the inside roof of my spray booth I'm giving these models an undercoat of the Tamiya fine primer as normal as I said in a previous video I don't think Matchbox used primer but I do because it hides a multitude of sins if you're not up to sanding and polishing all of the minor blemishes out of the vehicle you can get away with just a thin coat of undercoat and it hides all sorts of things and you end up with a really nice top coat of colour so I've got to replace that melted wheel that was affected by the paint stripper so I get out my little wheel tray of spares there's some there that are metal replicas that I've ordered online and haven't used there's other ones that I've cut off of previous cars that I've owned 
And now I'm going to show you the subtleties of the Matchbox range of wheels. So first up, I shall show you this is the one I'm trying to match. And here's some assortment of wheels that I've picked from my wheel selection. As you can see, they are very, very subtly different. Some are slightly smaller, some are slightly larger. That one there is just right. And up the top there, those are two metal versions of the plastic wheels. So that green one is the original wheel, and the blue one is the replacement that I'm going to use that I found in my box. Right, now these have been undercoated with the Tamiya Fine Primer. I do love looking at some of the details on the models. Here's the front of this little van with the detailed grille and headlights and indicators. There's no door handles or hinges on this vehicle, so I don't know how anyone was supposed to get into it. Maybe they climb through the hatch in the back. Uh, on the rear here, there's some rudimentary details, a little bit iffy. Not the best done by Matchbox. I saw that lump there, thought it was a, a casting error as it's only on one side. But when I compared it to the second model, the second model had it too, so I can only assume it's like a reversing light that may have been on the real vehicle. Underneath you can see Morris J2 pickup number 60, made in England by Lesney. And you can also see the original rivets are still in place. Uh, this is where it gets weird, and this is something I haven't done before. I've now sprayed the base with some satin black. Now it looks thick and gluggy here, but I, I shall show you in a minute, it dries really nicely. Here we go. This is what the base looks like after that satin black has dried. Now there's a bit of overspray on the body, but I don't care, because I'm going to repaint the body. But before I do that, I'm going to mask off the base, and eventually, at the end of the day, I'm going to have a beautiful model, I hope. And you're going to look at the base and think, hang on, this has not been tampered with. Because the original rivets are still going to be in place, and they're going to be perfect. But before I reach that stage, there is a lot of fiddly masking to do. And I must admit, this did take longer than normal. But I think the results speak for themselves at the end, and uh, it's well worth taking the time. So I'm using the Tamiya masking tape that I bought from the model shop. This is probably only the second time I've used it. It doesn't seem any different to any other masking tape to my mind. After I've masked it, I give the base another undercoat and that hides the black that was sprayed up the sides of the model. So that was the first one, now I'm doing the second one. I'm just showing you the sort of detail that you have to go to here whilst you're masking them off. The better you can mask the model off, the better the finished result's going to be. It's very fiddly and I must admit I use magnifying lenses mounted on my head when I'm doing this so I can see all the details that I'm either missing or correcting. So that's the second model done. And that gets an undercoat as well. So now these have both been undercoated, it's time for me to break out the sky blue or the light blue colour that I mixed before and put it down on these models. I don't usually do this but today I just put on a very light coat to begin with. I think my airbrush was set for the previous model where I used the lower pressure. Because I used a different paint, I used the lower pressure. Anyway, I ramp it up and give a second coat, a nice wet coat, and when it starts to go off, I decide to remove the masking tape. I'm very gentle here not to handle this too much. The paint is still slightly soft, and I don't want to leave any fingerprints on it. Uh, I want to get these in my oven to bake that paint on and I have learnt from experience that I do not want to put anything in my little oven that has masking tape on it because the glue reacts with the paint when it heats up. So now all the masking tape has been removed 
I'm baking this paint so that it dries particularly hard and then I can handle it when I'm putting it back together without leaving any fingerprints or marks on it. I was hoping to film the temperature rise and fall but my memory card got full so uh, it actually went up to over 70 and then it dropped back down again to room temperature. Whilst I was cooking those models in the oven I decided to shine up the axles that I had that I'm going to reuse. I bought this chuck on eBay, it's just a little 12 volt chuck and I had to source a power supply from an old laptop that I had but it's a handy little thing to have mounted on the bench from time to time and I use it every now and again. I could not use my axle reforming system on this model and it was only now that I realized there wasn't enough room between the guard of the body and the axle end for me to put it in the drill press and crush the ends over. So I had to resort to a different method and this was something that I didn't foresee as well. You cannot just put the axle straight in, you have to put the wheels in and then thread the axle through because the wheels are concealed inside the body between the chassis and the body as you can see there. Now using this small ball pane hammer I very very carefully made multiple strikes on the end of the axle and peened it over so it resembled a mushroomed end. On the underside there you can see that those original rivets are still in place and they look like they've never been touched. It looks like the base has never been removed. Well it hasn't. Just a couple of final touches now, the silver trim and the decals. So I'm painting on this pen, silver ink from the silver ink pen. And I like this, I prefer the ink from the silver paint because it flows better and it dries really quick. So I think these look mighty fine. Now I've got to put the decals on. Now there's only one problem. I've only got one set of decals. Oh hello Morty. He's hanging around. This is first thing in the morning I thought I'd get this model finished. He's hanging around for his breakfast so I'll get the decals on first and then I'll feed him and I shall feed myself. I'm trying to choose which one shall I go for. And I pick the one with the grey wheels. So I've got more of these decals on order from recovertoy.com and when they come I shall finish the other model. So I'll have two variants, one with black wheels, one with grey wheels, one with a cabin window on the rear and one without. To put these decals on I'm experimenting with this setting solution, it's a two part setting solution. I have been using Mr Mark Softer the new one is a two-in-one product whereby apparently it improves addition and also sets the decal. So I spread it on there and smeared it over with a, a small paintbrush and it basically disappeared. Anyway, it's still there. So I'm now going to put the decal over the top of it and see if it does anything different. It probably won't to the naked eye, I won't see anything, but Apparently it makes it mould itself to the power lines of the model and also improves the adhesion of the decal to the model. So it makes it a stronger bond, apparently. I mean it cost it nearly $11 so I hope it does something. Those cotton buds come in handy at this stage because you can just dab away and not only does it press the decal down onto the model but it also absorbs excess moisture. And when I did the other side here I put some of that decal solution on because I had a crease and it says that it's a, a leveling, it, it helps to level the decal. Anyway it went all crinkly and I kind of panicked a little bit and thought oh I hope I haven't ruined it. Anyway here's a reminder of what we started with. This was some kid's toy years ago he loved it that much that he thought he would paint it red 
and make it super special. Shame it lost the wheel and got left out in the rain and went all rusty. Well this is what it looks like now. What a beautiful little toy. This is one of the early models. It's an A series, it's number 60A. So first of the 1 to 75 I believe. Very basic, no windscreen, no interior. But such a cute little model. And here's the second variant but minus the decal. It's the one with the rear window in the cabin. And this one has the black wheels instead of the grey. So I shall be finishing this one off next week when my decals hopefully arrive in the mail. Now here's some close-up photographs of the finished model just to show you some of the finer details and what it looks like up close. Now this is a big surprise for you today. I've actually done five of these models and not just those two. So what I'm going to be doing is giving away three of these models. If you would like to win one of these three models when I have completed them and they have all the decals in place, please leave a comment with the word winner in it and I shall give it a week or so and then use a YouTube random comment picker to choose the winner. I will then announce the winners in the next video and you'll have to send me your address via email. So good luck everybody and I will see you next week. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the show. If you have, please like and subscribe. And this is Marty from Marty's Matchbox Makeovers saying goodbye.